We're so excited you're here with us on Resurrection Morning. This is all about Jesus. This is all about Him dying for our sins and raising from the dead. It's not about church tradition or what we did or what we thought it was. And actually, I'm going to preach an old school message this morning of what the first church concentrated on and paid a lot of attention to. But do you know that God has been was giving us signs that Jesus would come and die and pay a price for all of our sins from the beginning of Genesis all the way through the Bible? It's called prophecy. And actually, like in Isaiah 7, 14, he said that there would be a virgin that would conceive. Listen, 700 years before Jesus came to the earth, a man st stood and said, God will send a, a baby through a virgin. Now, how many knows the odds of that aren't very high? Hello? You understand there's a reason why, because the blood, the sinful blood of the father and the mother couldn't mingle within him or he would carry sin, but he, had, he carried the blood of God. There was a reason he was born of a virgin. And a, a virgin would have a baby. They would call him Emmanuel, God with us. Yes. Micah 5, 2, 690 years, somewhere in the area that God would prophesy and said, in the little town of Bethlehem, you're afraid it, God will send the Savior, you will, there will be born in the city of Beth. That's like God saying, in Claremont, Indiana, I'm going to send the Savior. Right. There were two Bethlehems in that day. Listen, it was a small little speck, a least of nowhere. What are the odds that those things take place? The scriptures filled full of hundreds of prophecies that Jesus himself said, I'm going to die. Yeah. They're going to crucify me. They will beat me, they will sell my clothes, they will mock me, they will, they will gamble underneath me, they will, all these things. And not only did he say it, it happened and he rose from the dead. This is the reason we celebrate. Amen. Amen. It's signs. And do you know, listen to me, and the first church after the resurrection of Christ, they would preach this for 36 times in the New Testament, Paul, Peter, Timothy, all of them, they would talk about the next return of the Lord. You know, he came once and died again. We celebrate that. But do you know he's coming back again? Yeah. Do you know he's not only came once, but he's coming back again, the return of the Lord. It's a sign. It was prophesied. I'm going to talk about some of that. But while I'm talking about signs, I was thinking about, and actually I've been preparing for this a little bit, signs in Indiana that we commonly see. Signs, highway signs mean a lot. Years ago, when I was in high school, I went to school with a friend of mine. His name was Greg Dunsell. Greg lived by a railroad track that had a railroad crossing that had a great big stop sign on both sides. Every day we crossed it, we rode together in high school, every day. And he knew it. He lived by it. We knew trains came by there all weird hours. You could never know. Like usually we know every Sunday morning a train will come by and you'll hear a big rumble right? And, but this track, you never knew when a train was coming. It was only a few years after I left the city and somebody had told me that Greg was killed by a train. And I said, how? And they said, right by his house. And I knew the very track. Mm. And you know what? Sometimes it scares me that we miss the signs all around us. Yeah. Sometimes we get so used to driving or going somewhere and we miss the signs. Yeah. But the signs in Indiana, we all say, if you've ever driven on Highway 70, anybody ever ridden on 70? Yeah. If you go to Richmond this way, or if you go to Terre Haute this way, you know you're, it's like going through Colorado, through the mountains. I mean, bumps, and, and, and here's some of the signs you find along Highway 70. Road work next 15 years. Come on, you know it's true. For years, my parents lived in Connersville, about an hour on the way to Richmond. They work on the same road every year. They have never stopped. And every year, I'm like, how many years are you going to work on this road? And the next one, i got to quit preaching on this. Pothole viewing up the street. You know, that's... Now, listen, that's all your fault that ever prayed for snow. If you've ever prayed for snow, it's your fault that we have potholes. And, you know, they say, our government will say, well, I'll just turn it in and, and we'll pay you. I've never seen nobody, the government fix anybody's tire that you got fixed in a pothole. If you are, it's a miracle if it happened for you. The next sign that we have. <laughs> Too many chiefs, not enough Indians. That's what we say around here. 
You know it's true, right? Why are they always on break every time you go by there? <laughs> we better move on. Some of you appreciate this kind of a sign. <laughs> Next one, we better hurry. I'm going. I love this one. Case of fire, please leave the building before posting it on social media. <laughs> One more, I was in one of our, one of our um, people who come to church quite often. Oh, well, we have this one. Please like and share this post. You can always, you know, you can use your phones in this service. I know people tell you, don't use your, your, your phones are welcome in here. You can just turn your ringer down, but use them, take pictures, and you can, you can take a picture of this post. It's a great one. This is one of the guys that, that go to our church, and I, I went in his neighborhood. I won't say his name is Steve Peters, but... The, I found this right, right close to his house. And then this is my favorite one this morning, and I'll, and I'll close with my silliness. Without freedom of speech, we would not know who the idiots of are. How many knows that's true? The signs. 36 times in the New Testament after Jesus rose from the dead, the Scripture would say, watch out because he's coming back. Yeah. And don't be unaware. There's a story of when the disciples were on their way to Emmaus after Jesus had risen from the dead and they were all doomed and gloomed. And, and now listen, and they believed, but they had just got, they were downtrodden. And Jesus all of a sudden walks up and they didn't recognize him. It's always scary thinking, Lord, I want to make sure I recognize you, right? How, how would I not know him? But they were so distraught. And some of us, maybe years ago, you've prayed, but life's got busy. And sometimes we've missed the signs. And I want to make sure that you don't miss the signs that are happening all around us. Yes. Signs that he's going to return. And he could return at any moment. Yes. Any moment he could split the sky. Yes. Any moment he may return. In Acts, it tells us the story, right when Jesus was ascended, the angels appeared to the disciples. Remember, and it was the 12 disciples and, and the women that were probably 120 people around the area, plus those who had, I mean, there, there were multiple people. And the, and the story tells us as Jesus was rising, the angels and say, don't be worried about him leaving because the same Jesus who leaves yeah. is coming right back, just like you've seen him. Soon he will enter. He will show back up. Hebrews tells us this. In Hebrews chapter 9, he says this. Hebrews 9, 28. So Christ was offered to bear the sins of many, to those who eagerly wait. Are we waiting or have we been lulled to sleep? Yeah. Are we waiting or are we too busy doing our own thing and looking elsewhere? Yeah. Right? Uh-oh, now it got quiet. Yeah. I know you want to hear like a, a typical like resurrection message, but this was the message of the New Testament church. Yeah. Listen to me. This is what was preached in the New Testament. He came once, and he's coming again. Amen. And we need, to be, uh, we need to be on point. We need to be at war. We need to be focused. We need to be doing this for the kingdom because he's going to return in an hour. We don't know. We don't know when. We don't know how, but it's all over. He is coming back. And let's finish that scripture, if you will, for me, Jonathan. Um, eagerly wait for him to appear what? A second time, apart from sin for salvation. Yeah. This passage it, uh, about this return. In Matthew, we're going to read a verse. In Matthew 24, 25, 26, he talks about his appearing and his coming back in multiple parables. Jesus kept telling the story. In every part of the story, he said, I don't want you to be unaware. Yeah. I don't want you to be distracted. I don't want you to be like the, five, like the ten virgins. Five of them went back and were aware. Five of them just forgot and lived life. Yeah. Five of them just went, or other men just went back and ran their business and got so busy, they put God's second place. When he shows back up, you don't want to be in the wrong place. Right. When he shows back up, you want to make sure your heart's right, that things are right between you and the Lord. Amen. There are things that, are, that, 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 that you're ready to go because he may appear. That's right. He may appear. I know many of you said, oh my God, I've heard that for a thousand years, Pastor. I remember going to church in the 1940s and hearing say, Jesus is coming back again. You know that the scripture even says in 2 Peter, if you'll go there for me, Jonathan, I know I'm all over the place. But in 2 Peter, he says, knowing this first, 
that scoffers will come in the last days walking according to their own lust, making fun of the Bible. Eh, just translate. Eh. And look what they say. Where is the promise of his coming? See, if you say anything about the second coming, people look at you like you're a freak. What's sad is most churches don't preach this today. I'm not, I'm not dogging our church. A lot of great churches in this city. But we've lost the focus, really, of what this is about, that he is coming back. He will part the sky. And there's signs of it coming. Actually, he's going to teach us a little bit how do we know the signs are coming. And we don't know the day. We don't know the hour. But I want to share a few things today. And he said, since the Father is still asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning. People say, well, you're crazy. I don't, I, uh, uh. They'll scoff and they'll mock. But I want to tell you something. He's coming back. Amen. And the chaos you've seen will be fixed. Yes. He is returning. Amen. He is returning. Yes. Thank God he's coming back to fix the mess. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. We had... Um, this was not my typical message that I preach on Easter. And I was so, I don't even know how to say this to you. I, I was so just, just, I was at the table. I knew what I wanted to preach. I had all my notes out all over the table. And Kim was cooking and, and she knows when I'm studying, like she won't even say anything to me. And I was just writing. I couldn't stop. And I said to Kim, I said, this is crazy. This is not where I want it to go. This is not what I want to do. But I just kept writing and writing. And I mean, I was done and just put it down and said, I know it's what the Lord wants us to say. He's saying to us, it's time we become aware Amen. of what's happening around Amen. us. Amen. It's time we understand. It's time we realize what's taking place. Are you with me? Yes. Let's go to, um, I'm trying to save a little bit of time. I've done this for three services this morning. And what a good crowd. I want to say thank you to every one of you that helped serve in the children's Amen. church this morning. Thank you to the worship team. Man, they have been here since way early this morning. And thank you for you greeting and you people. This is your church and you make it happen. And thank you for all you do. For um, There's so many things that happen and I appreciate all of you. You all right? Yes, sir. Matthew 24, verse 36 says this. Talking about his return. But of that day and hour, no one knows. Who knows? No one. No one. Not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Verse 37. But as the days of Noah were, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. He gives us some types and shadows of, of things that take place. All right? Let's read on verse 38. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark. Let me tell you something. It was absolute chaos going on. Marriage meant nothing. Commitments meant nothing. Sexual boundaries meant nothing. Partying meant nothing. God was put second place and it turned insane. Watch this. Watch this. Verse 39. And did not know until the flood come and took them all the way. So will be the coming of the Son of, so will be the coming of the Son of Man be. As you've seen it then, you'll see it now. Can you all admit with me, and we all have to admit this, the world is crazier right now than it's ever been. Amen. Would you not agree? Since COVID, like things have turned upside down. Like I don't know. Everything's insane. Everything just like turned and like it's not going back to normal. But do you know this stuff was prophesied to us? Yeah. This stuff was promised to us. In Matthew 24, at the, at the very beginning of these verses, and we'll just go back to verse 3. They're sitting at the Mount of Olives and talking with Jesus. And as Jesus was sitting at the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, he said, they said, when will this happen? What? When will you come back? Number two. What will be the sign of your coming and what will be the signs of the end of age? Three questions they're asking him. And watch how he answers, verse four. Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you. Do we not live in the most deceptive and craziest time that's ever been in the world? Amen. There ain't none of us that believe anything the news say anymore. I don't care if you watch CNN or Fox or whatever. They all lie. 
they all tell you a bunch of garbage. They'll tell you one side of the story and totally miss the other side of the story. And you go read the other side of the story, and then you find out, well, you didn't even give me the whole picture. You just painted it one way. Yeah. <laughs> we know there's two sides of the story. Chris told me this morning there's three sides of the story. There's God's side to the story, too, Amen. that we forget. But, man, you can't even hardly trust anybody nowadays. Right. Deception. Do you realize that even one of the biggest Bible publishers in the history of America that has produced Bibles worldwide now is behind the scenes producing a new Bible that will say new things that's actually going to take God's gender away. It will no longer call him a he or a father, but it's now going to be gender neutral and it's going to be sold publicly worldwide. And I won't even tell you the publisher right now, but when it comes out, I promise I will tell you. But I mean, there's just no fear in nobody in the deception. We just change it to be however we want. Look, God is not, look, you can't make God how you want him to be. Christianity is not picking the parts you like and get rid of the parts you don't. There's not everything about the Bible I don't like either. But it is what it is. We, we live like in the days, I don't know if you've ever seen Talladega Nights. But we act like Ricky Bobby, half of us. <laughs> Pray to baby Jesus, little six pound, eight ounce baby Jesus. The father in law said, Ain't no baby, he's got a beard. <laughs> we say we're Christians, and we, but we really just pick and choose what we want, and we go do the other thing that we want to do. I mean, there was just an athlete on that I knew the guy's not walking with God. He's like, oh, I want to give God all the glory. I'm like, please don't say another word because we all know what you do. We hear you're dropping F-bombs every other word on the court. Don't tell me you're walking so close with the Lord. Come on. You know, it, it's okay, but don't start giving God all the glory. And, yeah. Yeah. Right? I mean, the other guy in Ricky Bobby, the friend says, oh, I like the Jesus. Like, he's, he's got the party shirt on, singing lead singer for Leonard Skinner. <laughs> But that's what we do. We pick and choose what we want. Right. You know, as I pause right there, I'm going right back there when he's talking about deception. But Peter did tell us this. And Jonathan, if you will use the passage that I've given you, in, or in Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3, does say this, that for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Listen to me. I, I, I'm just going to tell you the truth, what the Bible says, because my truth doesn't matter. Amen. But his matters everything. And I'm more concerned about making sure I speak the word, just how the word says, because look, I'm going to stand accountable for it. Amen. So I, but the time's going to come when they don't want to endure sound doctrine. Like we had two people leave last service, walk out. You know what? Because I wasn't just preaching a typical resurrection. Everything's going to be great and glory. I'm sorry, you've heard the story a thousand times and not really show up to church any other time anyway. What do you need to hear the story again for? I got to be careful, but read on. He says, time will come to not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires. Oh, give me a Jesus who will just let me do whatever I want. Little eight pound baby Jesus. Because they have itching ears. They will heap up for themselves teachers. And they'll turn their ears away from truth. Be turned aside to fables. The White House yesterday just did a great big party, an Easter party. And you know what they did? Said no religious symbols allowed. You can't turn in Easter into some pagan holiday, dude. It's about Jesus dying, from the, dying and raising again from the dead. You can't twist the holiday and make it what you want. Now listen, I'm not fighting for one political party. I don't like either one of them. Come on. I'm still wondering how that's the only two people we can have to choose from. But it's time we wake up and realize none of these political guys are fixing it for us. Actually, it's all prophecy of what the world's going to set up to be like. It's spiritual. It's way above them. Yeah. Yeah. They're just being used as pawns. Right. Again, I'm not being political. I'm not saying... Okay. Come on. Turn aside the fables and just, just tell me something I want to hear. Yes, so let's have a holiday, but we, don't want any, we, don't, we can't talk about Jesus or the resurrection. Well, you don't got a holiday then, dude. Come on. I mean, even our calendar's dated by this. Right? 
Let's go back to, I'm going to get myself in trouble. Pastor Damon may have to come up here and rescue me. Matthew 24, let's go back there if you will, Jonathan. Thank you, you're doing great. You were doing great. <laughs> For many will come in my name claiming that I am the Messiah and they will deceive many. They're going to tell you all ways lead to heaven, all sorts of crazy stuff being taught. Twisting the Bible. Well, it doesn't really. See, we live in modern days, and it really doesn't mean that. Be careful. It's either a 100% truth, the Bible, or heck with it all, let's all go party. If there's one lie, one lie, it's all trash. See, they're all, because you can't listen to somebody interpret it and tell you, well, really, that, because how do you know that guy's right? That's right. right. Amen. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to trust me, dude. This is a matter of life and death. Amen. You don't want to trust me with your life. Amen. That's why you need to read the Bible for yourself, and you need to know what it says. And when I tell you something, you need to go look at that what it says. Because you need to know. I mean, if, this, if Jesus is really yeah. who he said he is, and he's the only way to heaven, yeah. and you do realize what it means, it means if the tomb is empty, Jesus is the only way. Yeah. Yeah. You realize you can't earn yourself there because if God would have crucified Jesus when you could have earned, yourself, earned your way there, he's a horrible God. But the fact that Jesus had to pay the price for you shows you couldn't have earned your way there. Yeah. Hello? Yes, and maybe the resurrection says, maybe you ought to read the instruction book. I know, guys, we don't want to like reading the instruction book. Amen. But if it's really who he says he is. Hello? Maybe we ought to step back and quit letting somebody else decide the rules. Well, oh, I don't know if I'm in trouble or not, Pastor Damon. I'm trying. Let's go back, um, Jonathan, spare me here. For many will come in my name claiming I'm the Messiah and deceive many. The deception in the world today is insane. Yeah. I don't even know what news to watch. I really don't. Amen. I really don't. I don't even know what. Every piece of news I look at, I'm just thinking, well, I know you're lying about half of it, so I've got to find the other side of the truth. Yep. Yep. You will hear of wars. and rumors of wars. See that you're not alarmed. These things may happen, but the end is still to come. Do you know that since 2020, we are now at more of a place where there's more wars happening and more wars that can take place in a moment's notice than ever in the history of the world? We're right now on the beckoning of some major wars that may take place. We all know the, world that's, the war that's taking place now in Israel and against, against Gaza. And the Bible's very clear. Look, very clear. When you see Israel being attacked on every side, watch out. All hell's about ready to break loose. And I mean, you now Hezbollah is in it. And now, I mean, it's all over the place. The Turkish government trying to get involved in it. And Iran, who's staying there, not in it with all the Houthis, all the crazy things going. You know, we have a crazy war going on, going on in Ukraine. I mean, I don't even understand all of it. I, I really don't. We've been sending money over there to some of the Bible schools in Ukraine. We support some Russian. Look, look I'm not against Russians. I, the government's wicked. That doesn't mean the Russian people are. Amen. The Ukraine government is about as crazy. I don't know I can trust those guys either. But I know there's Ukrainian Christians. There's, there's, there's Russian Christians. And we love the people, but the government. But you realize, I mean, all the wars that take... Do you realize in Sudan... Now listen to this alone. Please search me out and find out that I'm telling you the truth, so I'm not exaggerating anything. Yeah, Since 2020, there have been, listen to this number, 8 million Sudanese people that are running for their life as refugees out of their country being chased by extreme Muslims. Go look it up. I don't even hear the news telling us about that. Little boys and girls now don't have a home and their parents don't have jobs and they've lost everything they ever had. We live in America and sometimes we just hide behind like, thank God for this country. Thank God we're all, we're, I mean, this country's not perfect, but, but you hear what I'm saying. But it, it, it's a crazy what's taking place. Do you know there's a crazy war taking place in Armenia? Do you know over, there's over 100,000 Armenians running for their life right now? 
from an extreme Muslim country that's chasing them out. They've lived there for hundreds and hundreds of years and running for their life. You realize we're on, on, on a blink of Taiwan and China blowing up. Do you realize there's war in Burma happening right now? The UNTA, listen to me, I've been there. Damon has been there. The UNTA is wicked. There's no, they are the government and they don't care. You can be shot in the streets in Burma. They'll just throw you in the back of a cab and take you away and burn the body. They don't even say anything. They don't care. They are persecuting everybody that's not Burmese in Burma. Is being, that's the reason there's, some, there's a lot of refugees here in this country of Burmese people because they're running for their very life. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. We don't realize everything. Listen to me, I, and I'm not doom, doom and gloom guy, but do you realize we're one step away from a horrible nuclear war? One, one misunderstanding, one bad piece of information like, I, I'm going to say this. I could be wrong. Oh. You know, I, 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 look back at, I look back at George Bush Jr. I think he really did love the Lord. But I think he made a horrible mistake listening to somebody tell him there were all these weapons of mass destruction that, Houdin, that um, Haddam Hussein had. Look, Hussein was a nut in killing people and doing horrible things to people. Don't get me wrong. But like, are you sure like all this information that we need to go over? Because really things are worse now there than they were. Listen to me. And we've got to be careful. What if one of our president, what if one of our leaders decided all of a sudden, do you know that America has 1,770 nuclear warheads deployed today? Deployed. That's not what we, go search it out. This is not a hard number to find. They're on ships. They're loaded in hangar bays ready for, for um, planes. And they're buried in the ground in America and in other parts of the world that could be shot off with a push of one button. That will blow a destruction that will kill millions of people that fast. And once they're released, there's no getting them back. One person from punching the wrong button. What if he's getting the wrong information? Do you know that Russia has 1,670 deployed nuclear weapons? I mean, I hope this like sets in. Listen to me, here's the countries. China, France, UK, Pakistan, India, and Israel all have nuclear weapons. All of them. You ever, you know, the feud between Pakistan and India? Do you know that we're on the brink of North Korea having nuclear weapons and they claim that they do? I don't know if you know anything about that ruler, but that dude is a wicked. Do you know we're on the, on the, on the cuffs of Iran having nuclear weapons? And we live in America and act like these things are never going to happen. I don't know if you've ever read the book of Revelation, but there is one point when one third of the earth dies on one day. And the Bible says their skin melts. Well, I don't know what else you would call that. Come on. Yeah. But I didn't make it up. It's the same Jesus who rose that predicted his death and resurrection, predicted that. He's the one that said it. Boy, I got it quiet in the house now. <laughs> Woo, take a deep breath. Hey, this is the reason we pray for our government. Amen. Like them or not. Pray for the peace. Yes. Pray for the leaders. Yes. Pray for your president. Yes. Pray for the government. Hello. Amen. And I'll leave the politics alone. Let's go back to Matthew 24. I dug myself in a hole. Help me get out of it, Lord. You'll hear warmer rumors of wars, but see that you're not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is not yet to come. Verse 7. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. The weather's changing all around us, guys. I mean, I'm, I'm still saying, I'm not always so, so sure about all this global warming stuff, but the weather's definitely changed. Hello? 
I mean, it's crazy. Even the winter we've had here, we've had such a mild winter here. But everybody be quiet because it's still tournament time. It could still snow tomorrow. <laughs> Hello? But the weather patterns, famines all over there, people starving. Listen to me. I know this for a fact. Do you know that in Haiti, it's so bad with the tribe, with the gang wars, the government's been so bad and just demolished the people I, I know two leaders who have orphanages in, in Haiti that actually aren't even there now, have ran, and they say their children are eating mud. Guys, it's only a half hour, 45 minute flight from United States from Florida. But we in America, we're paying, for, we're paying our farmers not to grow crops. We have kids here in America that don't have food. Because you know as well as I know, the rich are getting richer and the poor is getting poorer. Amen. I'm an economic term. How many of you are not paying usually double of everything that you paid for before? Right. Amen. Do you know, I mean, the economic meltdown's huge in the world. One of our pastors we support in Turkey, Chatty, he tells us that diesel is like almost $100 a gallon. Or I'm sorry, a liter. $100. He said, Dana, we don't have electricity. They shut it off. It may only come on once every other couple days. And when it's cold, we have no heat. We have no way to cook. We're trying to start fires. He goes, but diesel is $100. How I many knows I'm not driving my black truck around if it's $100 a gallon, a liter for, for diesel? Well, I never imagined paying $4. He said, watch out when you see these things happen. Yes, sir. Let's read on. I got to hurry for time's sake. All these are the beginning of, you know what a birth pang is? The women all said. <laughs> Guys, you know what it means when your wife is getting ready to have a baby and she said, it's time, take me to the hospital. Chances are, it's a birth pang. It's the worst pain she's had, but she's not ready yet. She'll probably go and say, well, you're not even dilated. It's Braxton Hicks. It's fake labor. My daughter is pregnant, getting ready to have a baby. Another day, she was growling at me. And I said, my God, what's wrong with you? She goes, you ain't got no 11-pound baby inside of you. I realized, oh, she's suffering through birth pains. Like, get this thing out of me. It's killing me. And she doesn't have an 11-pound baby. But it feels that way, right? I said it to you, and I'll say it to you again. Think about this. Have you ever seen the times worse than they are? Can I it's going to keep getting worse until it all explodes and he returns from the sky. There's going to be wars and rumors of war. There's going to be weather change. There's going to be signs in the heavens, signs there's... Disease, I mean, I, I, I'm still freaked out over COVID. I mean, it, I mean, crazy disease, crazy. And the world, you know, the World Health Organization said they had almost had all the diseases wiped out. And then COVID came and like, surprise, surprise, check that one out. I remember the day they shut down the NCAA tourney because Maryland was going to win the tourney regardless of what any of you say. <laughs> And they shut the attorney down. And I said, you can't shut down the NCAA attorney. Dear Lord, I had no idea we'd be shutting the church down in a few weeks. Yeah. I had no idea. And I've watched people die who were totally healthy from this COVID. And I watched other people live through it who I never thought would make it. And it affected everybody different. It made no rhyme or reason, right? Yeah. My wife couldn't smell, couldn't eat. I could smell everything and ate like a horse <laughs> when I had COVID. I couldn't think, but I... <laughs> It's so weird, right? I mean, who says diseases aren't good? The Bible says very clear. The plagues will come in a way that we've never seen. Diseases coming away. I mean, modern science, modern medicine is amazing. Amazing. And thank you to every doctor and nurse we have in the house. Amen. But the bottom line is they can't save us either. Are you guys okay? Can I say this? Are you watching for his return? Because the signs are all around us that it could be sin. The signs are all around that it could be soon. 
Let me say it again. The signs are all around. Jesus said perilous times will come. Men will become lawless. They will become disobedient to parents. They will become unthankful. They will turn their lust into a place where it overrides God. Even, I mean, everything is upside down. Everything is upside down. It's the signs of the time that he's going to return. And I'm going to close with this thought. He came once and he's, came, and he's coming again. And this is what Jesus said multiple times. When he appears through the sky over the top of Mount Olives, all will see him, the scripture says. We understand now, then it seemed crazy. But now we understand we have TV, we have live satellite. It can be seen easily. When he returns, here's what he says will happen. And I'll just read this passage to you. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. Look what the scripture says. This is what the New Testament taught. He is appoint, it is appointed for men to die once, but after this comes, are you ready to face the Lord? We celebrate Easter today and thank God, but the real message should be, are we ready for his return? Thank God he come and redeem me. Listen, I'm not saying he came because you couldn't save yourself. But the problem is, is some of us have come to Christ, but we've lost focus and we've quit paying attention to the signs and we're running through the stoplights and we're just doing life like crazy, like everybody's. And we've lost the focus of Jesus. Amen. We've lost the focus that he's going to come. And I don't want him to come back when I'm not prepared, Amen. when I'm in the wrong place. Amen. And then comes the judgment. Verse 28, do we have that there? So also Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time. Who's eagerly waiting for him to appear a second time? It's not even something we discuss anymore, but really ought to be the focus of our coming. He's coming soon. Why does he say he's coming soon? Look, God's not enveloped in your time. When he says soon, God controls time. God, time lives inside. Look, God is outside of time, inside of time. He created soon to him is any time he wants. Amen, amen. And you realize when the prophets prophesied this stuff, they would see, like they would see a mountain, then they would see another mountain. They'd prophesy, he's coming, and he's coming again. That's the reason many times you'll see it used right succinctly, right next to each other. But what they don't see is the valley that's in between. It may seem like it's going to be some time before it takes place. But all the signs are at hand. He's coming back any moment. What am I saying to you? I want you to be prepared. I don't want to play church. I don't want to just pamper you today and let's, let's hide an Easter egg and let your kid find it. That's all cute. Fine. Have all the Easter egg you want. Save some candy for me. <laughs> but the real issue is this morning, are you ready for him to come back? Amen. It's the real message that should be discussed this morning. And I close with one last passage. Romans 14. We'll just walk through these. It says, for we all shall stand. How many's all mean? Who? Everyone. Everyone. This is the reason I take preaching serious. Like, I really don't care about, I realize, man, I'm going to be held accountable for, and I better be saying what the Word says. And I fear standing up here, because I just don't want to give you my thoughts. I got lots of thoughts. Half of them are goofy. But I want to be right. Look, we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Verse 11. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee. The people who say they don't believe him, that he's not real, that it's a fable, that it's a story, that it's not true, they too will bow one day. They too will bow one day. The people who dog you for your Christianity, people tell you it's an old school religion, they too will bow one day. They too will bow one day. Every knee shall bow to me. And verse 12 says, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then each, how many is each? All of us. Each of us shall give an account of himself to God. I want to say something to you. Your works can't get you there. Your good works, because who do you compare it to? Right. Billy Graham. Let me tell you, all of our works is worthless. Yes. We've all sinned and messed up. The only one is Jesus who lived a perfect life, who never sinned, 
who lived before God right and died in your place, took your sin so you could live. You'll only find eternal life by coming to him. And this morning as our altar team comes, if you've not accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, I beg you to do it today. I beg you before he shows up and you're not ready. I'm not asking you to join this church. I'm not asking you to cut your hair. I'm not asking you to wear a tie. I'm not asking you to do anything. I'm asking you, are you ready for Jesus' return? And let me tell you, it's not going to help if he comes and you're not ready and you say, well, my neighbor, that's not going to work for you. This is your decision. And I'm also saying this to the church who you love the Lord and you've prayed and you're doing pretty good, but you've lost focus of the reality that he may come back every day. This is the reason we're doing church. This is the reason we serve in the children's church. This is the reason we're all focused in on this warfare and doing whatever we can. This is the reason we're giving because he may come back and we've got to get the message out to the whole world. The whole world needs to know that he's coming back and everybody's going to face a judgment. And only through Christ can you live victorious. Stand on your feet with me, if you will. Father, we love you this morning and we bless you. With every eye closed and every head bowed, if you don't know him, I pray that you would come to the Savior this morning. The one who rose from the dead rose for you. But that resurrection was so that you could have life, but you've got to come to him. You have to come to him. The Scripture says, the Bible, the Holy Spirit, and the Word at the very end of the book of Revelation say, come, come. If you don't know him, come. And let us pray for you today. And when we go celebrate this day, I want you between you and the Lord to say, Lord, I'm in a right place. And if there's something that needs to change, something that needs to be fixed in your life, cry out to him and do it right. Let's get on board and be prepared for his second return. We'll give you the glory, God, in Jesus' name. And the church said, I love you guys. May God bless you today in Jesus' name.